Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday. Uh, it is June 19th, 2023, about 12.17 p.m. here along the West Coast. Latest earthquake activity shows a 2.8 uh, over here around the Turkey region. Looks like they did see a 4.6 earlier as well. Some aftershock activity following the uh, large-scale events earlier this year around the uh, Turkey region. Looking at the USGS model here. Uh, also shows some activity around the San Francisco Bay on the San Andreas Fault here. 2.5 coming in just outside of Pacifica, California, which sits in a very dangerous area for, for earthquake movement. Uh, also last night, looks like uh, we did have a little bit of activity with a 2.1, a little bit further down south. This earthquake coming in following that movement into the Gulf of California. Uh, yesterday, of course, that 6.4 coming in down there. Looks like we did have a little aftershock. 5.2, uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning or so. Still waiting for some further adjustment and upstream activity along this plate boundary, uh, which, of course, includes the California area. So we'll continue to watch that. We did see a little bit of movement also stretching up here across the Ridgecrest area yesterday. A couple uh, twos and threes, actually, a 3.5. Coming in late last night near the Lake Isabella area. Let's see what we got for the 2.5 map and above. It looks a little bit more active than uh, I'd say the last 10 days or so. A little bit of microquake activity down south as well along the uh, San Jacinto and the Elsinore Fault. The southern end of the San Andreas Fault looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, but this is the segment uh, that will produce, no doubt, a big earthquake one of these days. The question is when? been hearing that for I don't know I've been hearing that since uh I'm not going to give out throw out years but uh yeah definitely for quite a while northern California pretty quiet up into Oregon quiet as well a little spotty activity across the Cascades today nothing major going on uh, over here in Colorado just outside of Trinidad seen a 4.3 about seven o'clock this morning followed or uh, prior we had a 3.8 in the same area uh, if I remember right, uh, this area does host some, uh, let's see, I think this area had some old oil pumping operations out here, but kind of hard to tell now. Uh, may, may have been in a different spot uh, away from this area. Looks like there's some type of... Uh, let's see here. Looks like it is close to a creek, but I'm really not seeing any uh, oil pumping operations out here. About four kilometers deep below the surface. Last 30 days of activity out here. Let me see what we got. Let's see if we've had any prior movement. Looks like a couple smaller quakes uh, earlier in the month of June in the same location. They are, they are increasing slightly, 4.3. As far as fault systems go, there's a couple up here on the map uh, just outside of the area, and I'm sure there's some others around this region that are not uh, completely set up there as uh, far as it being able to show which faults are out here. But it uh, looks like there may be a few faults triggering some earthquakes out there in Colorado today. Oklahoma and Texas, a little spotty. Nothing going on here across the uh, eastern portion of the country for now. Uh, across the Caribbean plate and the Middle America Trench here. Did see a little bit of uptick yesterday following that larger scale movement up here. 4.3 off the coast of El Salvador. Also Panama region seen a 5.3 uh, yesterday as well. Earthquake 3D program here will show some smaller quakes in the area. Looks like some twos kicking up out there off the coast of Panama as well. Down into the South America region, one earthquake coming in right now, 3.1. Uh, that looks like that's into the uh, Chile area. All right, over here, Western Pacific and uh, some adjacent plates. Java Trench, very active here today. All areas across, uh, looks like Papua New Guinea westward here and up into the Philippines, creating a uh, fairly large massive movement here today we did see 
A six-pointer come into the Papua New Guinea area early this morning. That was downgraded just a little bit uh, to a 5.9. That's still somewhat of a larger earthquake there, followed up by quite a few fours. Uh, doesn't look like any further movement back building here across the Kerbedek Trench or the Tonga Trench today. Uh, of course, over the past few days, it's been of some high interest out here, including that odd 5.0 earthquake here into the area of Norfolk Island, Australia region. This is a little odd one. Don't see too much activity out here. So things are taking a little turn for the quiet spell right now in this area while we're seeing things really bunch up across the Philippines and the uh, Indonesia Islands area. So numbers today looks like quite a few fours out here. Um, and as you can see on the globe, there's definitely quite a few smaller quakes in there as well. A high clutter of movement across the region today. Over here into the Kuro Kamachaka Trench and the Japan area, these things or these guys getting hit with a little bit of activity today. Uh, notice the uh, Kuro Kamachaka Trench right here, Kuro Islands. Seen um, some fours, including the upper 4.9 earlier today. A little cluster of activity kicking up, specifically right there in that region. Continue to watch this area for some larger scale movement. It's building up. It's definitely been building up for uh, a little while in terms of stress. Uh, also here in Japan, 5.0. That one coming in late last night. But activity elevated here across the Western Pacific today. Up into the Alaska region, mostly smaller microquakes. Some twos going on up there. I don't see anything major uh, blasting up there in that area of the world. The big island of Hawaii. Very calm conditions for the most part. A little bit of movement around Kilauea Volcano today. Uh, this activity about, about a kilometer or so below the surface. 2.1 and a 1.8. Doesn't look like there's anything major changing there across the area. Uh, let's see what else we got. Of course, that earthquake south of South Africa yesterday. No further movement kicking up there today, I don't believe. See what we got here on the earthquake 3D globe. Nope. In fact, it disappeared. Where did it go? Hmm. It's a little odd. Let me check here. I'm pretty certain I have 24 hour mark on here. Well, I guess we'll just add it a little bit. Nah, I don't. Let's see here. Right about there. There we go. Okay. 24 hours of activity on the globe. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on up there right now. All right, let's see what else we got here for space weather movement. Looks like 99% chance for C flare activity. M flare elevated to 40. X flare elevated to about 10% chance. I'm guessing that's due to a growing number of sunspots. Latest update from last night uh, from the SolarHam site speaks of the 2.5 solar flare. Um, let's look at these sunspots today and see what we have going on. This is going to be a little bit older image. The most recent imagery is going to be right here. And uh, we definitely do have numerous sunspots that are currently facing the Earth directly. Uh, but they don't look all that promising here, folks. They are a little... A uh, little on the quiet side, far as the main cores go in, in these sunspot regions. Um, a new sunspot region out here on the southeastern limb. We're getting a little bit better view of it. Looks, uh, looks active for now. But a lot of these looked active when they were off here. And then they just kind of stabilize as soon as they face the Earth. Uh, but either way, it looks like maybe another sunspot up here that could be developing a little bit uh, more intense core. We'll continue to watch these uh, and see what they see what they want to do. Overnight, looks like we did see a little bit of an M flare, very small activity and kind of crackling here with some C flare activity, but nothing big yet. We'll eventually get around to that, I'm sure. Uh, no major solar weather forecast here far as the three-day geomagnetic forecast goes. Not looking at any major solar storms for now. Weather activity out here across the states. 
well, kind of scattered. We do have a lot of cooler air coming down here into the West Coast right now. In fact, it's 72 degrees here in Northern California, about 20 degrees cooler than normal. Uh, and last night, I can't say I froze, but it got a little cold. Uh, for summertime weather, it got a little chilly last night, which I enjoyed. I don't think it's supposed to warm up too much today, so it's going to be an absolutely pleasant day to be outside. As uh, far as severe weather goes, a little bit of movement or uh, some activity down into the south with a slight risk of severe weather. That's where you'll find the 5% chance for tornado probability there across Mobile, uh, Mobile, Mobile Alabama, Gulfport, Mississippi. And uh, looks like areas around Florida as well. Main threat, uh, well, I have to say it's probably going to be some wind and a little bit of hail. But don't count out that 5% chance for tornado activity in that uh, region there on the map. Uh, tomorrow, next day, looks a little scattered after that. Not seeing any major extreme severe weather threat setting up. And far as hurricane activity goes, we'll go ahead and glance into the future, see what the GFS model wants to predict. We're watching for development down here or coming off of the Atlantic. Um, looks like maybe that was, uh, looks like there was a little one here off the East Coast trying to develop. Uh, but for the most part here, I'm not seeing anything set up for... Um, for any type of uh, tropical development there in the Gulf. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on it, see how that uh, develops, or if it develops. Uh, the symbol out here, there's our cooler air across the West Coast. I seen even parts of Oregon get some snow overnight. Uh, some very cold temperatures coming in down to the uh, Western states right now. Abnormal, very abnormal. We should easily be up in the mid nineties and we've been up in the 110 range before in years past by this time uh, this late in the in the year so that cold weather is going to sit around a little bit uh, provide some relief out here along the west coast and after that things uh, at least for this week maybe next week as well looks like we could be uh, some uh, enjoying some pleasant conditions and then it cooks a little bit uh, out there along the west coast but nothing big uh, if you look at the height, uh, geopotential height anomalies here, uh, the darker the colors indicating the more intense that ridging would be, which would indicate higher temperatures and drier conditions. And we're not seeing it out here. just looks a little warm, but it's not completely centered here across the West Coast. So, And again, this is subject to change way out uh, into the first week of July. But this week, this weekend, and uh, a good portion potentially of Next week looks pleasant here in California. Perfect. Absolutely love it. All right, guys, uh, let's see. Is that about it? I think that's about it here. Uh, nothing major change in here across the volcano hazard map. Um, of course, Kilauea Volcano is still continuing. A couple of volcanoes up in the Aleutian Trench worth monitoring, but nothing drastic going on here. Um, hazard notification system shows um, pretty much the same deal as we've been watching for a little while. The uh, Hawaii volcano folks there talking about the uh, Kilauea volcano currently erupting. Um, it's confined to the crater. No unusual activity has been noted across the rift zones. And uh, this could uh, continue for quite a while. All right. Catch you guys back here tonight sometime. In the meantime, I'm going to go out and attend to the garden and uh, maybe get a little bit of yard work done. We'll see. Take care, folks. Have a good one.